This is Roadkill's Junkyard Gold. Desert Valley Auto Parts has two locations, one in North Phoenix, Arizona, and this one here in Casa Grande, Arizona. They're both packed with rust-free Arizona vehicles, and the big difference is this one here caters to much earlier cars. We've got cars here from the 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, and early 1970s. Now, I'm hearing talk about some rare stuff here. A hot rod Lincoln, a sliding roof station wagon, a first-year Chevy X-Frame, a debut edition Dodge RT muscle car, and as always, I'll be looking for the next roadkill rescue candidate. This is a massive yard with lots to see. Let's start digging. Well, wandering through the Mopar section, looking for some roadkillable material. Mopars are always popular with the guys. This is pretty cool. It looks like a 1953 Plymouth Plaza two-door wagon. Man, these are cool. Almost like the poor man Chevy Nomad. This gives us a good look at Chrysler's body on frame construction. We see here the frame, which is separate. The body bolts down onto it. And this is how Chrysler built their cars until 1960 when it went to something totally new called unitized construction. Here we see something. This is a 60s, mid-60s B body. And it shows us that unitized construction right here. See how the frame rail and the floor pan are welded together. The idea was that it was lighter, stiffer, and uh, this is how Chrysler built their cars all the way into the 1980s and even the 1990s. Now this here is a two-door hardtop. Uh, it's a Plymouth or a Dodge. This thing needs to be checked out. Let's scope it out here. Okay, these are 11-inch drum brakes. Now keep in mind, if you don't know your Mopars, Chrysler gave all of their muscle models 11 by 3 inch front drum brakes, the biggest brakes in the business. By contrast, GTOs and 442s and Chevy SS396s gave you a 9.5 inch brake, kind of small for the job. So this says this is either a muscle car, a police car, or a special handling and brake package option added to an otherwise standard two-door. Uh, but being a two-door, it's not a police car. And looking on the firewall here, I do see uh, that the inner fenders have been cut away. And here we see Chrysler's manual steering box. This is made out of aluminum, quite light, compared to the iron pieces found in GM and Ford cars. Now, power steering was optional, but when I see manual steering on a car like this, I start to think muscle car. And you know what? This is a four-speed car because this is a Z-bar bracket, not seen on any other transmission. I gotta learn more, I gotta see if the VIN is here. This will tell us everything. Okay, now we check the VIN. This is the moment of truth. WS23L. This is a 67 Coronet RT, Dodge's first self-aware muscle car. Now keep in mind, the Pontiac GTO came out in 1964, and after that, the rest of Detroit was playing catch up. So for 67, Dodge finally had their first self-aware muscle car in this, the Coronet RT. Now the fifth digit is L, which means this car was born with the base engine, which was a 440 Magnum, which means 375 horsepower, 480 foot-pounds of torque. And by comparison, you know, the biggest GM muscle car engine was 400 cubic inches. So Dodge gave you 40 cubic inches more and a full 375 horsepower. Now, if we saw the letter J in the fifth spot, that would tell us this is a street Hemi car. And I'd be blown away to find it here in the junkyard. We see right here on the quarter panel, these two holes, those are the piercings where the big RT logo would have gone. And again, the RT was first used in 1967. It's still used today on Dodge muscle cars, the Challengers and the Chargers with the Hemi engines. But here's the beginning right here of the RT dynasty. Now we do see that the rear wheel openings have been chopped open. Undoubtedly, somebody put some slicks or some wide tires on this thing at some point. And the trouble with these Coronet RTs and their cousin, the Plymouth GTX of 67, was they had very small wheel openings in the back. So if you put big tires on them, they'd rub. That's why most folks just chopped away the metal. And this car would have had leaf springs and a Dana 60 rear axle thanks to that four-speed transmission. Had this been born an automatic, there would have been a Chrysler 8 3 quarter back here. But again, that Dana 60 was a huge rear axle, also used in trucks, had a nine and three quarter inch ring gear. It was basically indestructible. And yet once, there's a big old Dana sitting right here when this thing was new off the factory. Pretty cool piece. Well, I think this one here is pretty much sliced away, too far gone for salvation. But every time you see a Challenger or a Charger RT today, think of this car. It all started right here, the 67 Coronet RT. Hey 
External engine identification emblems were pretty common during the muscle car 60s, but in the 1950s, they were pretty rare. This is the very first one ever used by Mercury. This is on a 1957 Mercury Turnpike Cruiser. When you see that emblem, you knew you were looking at the optional 368.